Welcome to lab. We're going to look at the ear model. The external portion of the ear is the pinna, also called the oracle. This directs sound waves into the auditory canal. Sound waves continue along the auditory canal past this bony area, which is the external acoustic meatus and cause vibration to the tympanic membrane. The vibration of the tympanic membrane vibrates the auditory ossicles, beginning with the malleus, followed by the incus, and then the stapes. So the malleus is the one that is immediately attached to the tympanic membrane. When sound waves come into the auditory canal and the sound is loud, fast, vibrations are strong, the tensor tympani muscle helps to subdue and help to control the tympanic membrane. The tensor tympani muscle helps to subdue those in a reflexive reaction The inner ear is the place where we have the cochlea and the vestibule along with the semicircular canals. So the cochlea is responsible then for interpreting those sound waves and sending that information along the um, cochlear nerve. The vestibule receives those sound waves initially due to the uh, stapes attachment at the oval window. The semicircular canals are structures that function in equilibrium and balance. And at the end of each of those, there's a little swelling or a bulb called an ampulla. If we open up the cochlea, the structure in the center of it creates a spiral. The spiral like a corkscrew, and that's called the modiolus. This is the cochlear nerve, and this is the vestibular nerve. So together, they're the vestibulocochlear nerve. Your lab guide has instructions for looking at the organ of Corti, the flat panel model. You're going to be looking at structures of the inner ear and the cochlea. So just for recall, this is the cochlea. And we are going to be looking at the inside of it. So one of these circles right here represents this particular model. The cochlea represents a bony labyrinth or a maze of channels on the inside and it is lined with a membrane, the membranous labyrinth. And so the membranous labyrinth actually separates the one single space into three chambers. The scala, vestibule, or the scala vestibuli, and the scala tympani. The third space is called the um, cochlear duct. These spaces each contain fluid. So the scala vestibuli and the scala tympani both contain the same fluid, which is perilymph. And perilymph is more similar to cerebral spinal fluid. The fluid that is located in the um, cochlear duct is called endolymph, and that is more similar to intracellular fluid. So it's going to have a higher concentration of potassium ions.
And here we can also see the cochlear nerve. This one that extends further would also be the cochlear nerve. So at this end, we are seeing the dendrites that come from these cell bodies, which reside in what is called the spiral ganglia. The dendrites pick up information from the hair cells that are located here. That information then can create um, local potentials in our soma, and once it reaches threshold, it will trigger an action potential in the axons that will go to the brain. Some other structures now that are on your list include the vestibular membrane, which is up here, and the basilar membrane, which is right here. We have the tectoral membrane up here, and then these are the hair cells, and you can see the hairs off of those. Those are called stereocilia. Supporting cells do not have the stereocilia and aren't connected to the tectoral membrane. Instead, they are down below and support the hair cells. You have inner hair cells and outer hair cells.